God. Oh. That fucking thing. Jesus. Here's the good news, boys and girls. Muzzle stayed in a safe direction. But when a 45 shell lodges itself between your eyelid and your eye pro. Oh, fuck. If you see me on the streets for the next couple weeks. Yeah, that's what happened. God. Okay, everyone. What we have here, it's the Alchemy Custom Weaponry. I've butchered their name many a time and called them Alchemy 1911s and Alchemy Weapons. Alchemy Custom Weaponry Classic Carry. What is it? Well, it's classic and it's meant to be carried. So I guess we just go ahead and wrap. Uh, I guess that's the end of the review. Ah, fuck. I'll give you a little more, okay? It's a single stack, 1911. This one happens to be chambered in 45. Yes, I've been shooting a lot of uh, 9 mil 1911s as is late. This one is very, very classic. And if there's a way that I could really describe Alchemy 1911s to you, it is uh, vintage styling with modern functionality, okay? And there's something very, very appealing about that to me. Uh, it speaks to me. It's very spirit animal-esque. It's a company that goes, hey, we like classic, old, you know, styling, classical shit, but we want it to work really good and do what we say we're gonna have it do. You talk in my language. Now, I have no doubt failed many times to explain my real love for 1911s because it's one of those, it's to a degree, it's one of those things if you get it, you get it. Um, and if you don't, you think that those of us who get it are out of our minds, okay? So let me, uh, let me equate it to like tattoos for a second, okay? And by the way, to answer a quick question on this because I keep getting comments on what's with the one sleeve, dude? What you trying to be so cool for? It's not about being cool. Since we're gonna have a quick conversation about tattoos, this is an incomplete tattoo, and I'm a little bit of a uh, of a nitpicky details guys. And hey, when this is done, it can come out and see the world. Until then, it shall stay covered up. We've got, as of today, about two sessions left, so pretty soon, thank God, it will be done. Um, guys, thanks for watching the video. Like, subscribe, all that good stuff that you already know what to do. In terms of how you can support our channel, we try to keep this thing as free and organic and uh, fun as possible. So we don't ask for anything other than just support our company when you need us. What is it that you do? Thanks for asking. Uh, actually in the real estate services world. So we operate in uh, Utah, parts of Florida, Texas, Arizona. So if you're buying, selling a house, or if you have a buddy or something like that, contact us, you can go to the website, shoot us an email, shoot us a DM on Instagram. We'll have all that stuff below. And uh, yeah, we'll get back to you. We actually see and check messages. So thanks for the support and we'll see you guys soon. But tattoos are interesting. You know, there's a lot of people that go into tattoos and they just walk into a shop and they're like, hey, who's available? I need a butterfly on my ass. And you're just like, all right, you, you know, by the way, that's how you get the worst tattoo artist because that's the one who's available and not booked, but sidebar conversation, okay? But there's people who get tattoos who they just want to get some shit on their bodies. And if you were to ask them a year after that or five years after that, hey, who did your tattoo? They'd be like, ah, some shop downtown Salt Lake versus some people who are really in the pursuit of art, right? And they're getting things that have significance to them and to be perfectly honest with you, I know it's gonna sound funny, I couldn't tell you the name of the tattoo shop where I get tattooed. I know the name of the artist, right? I'm loyal to artist over shop. 1911s, in a sense, are kind of similar to that, okay? There's mass-produced 1911s, like for example, a, and this is not a knock on SIG, right? But there's SIG 1911s. Ah, SIG 1911 is kind of a SIG 1911, right? Like no one like really buys a SIG 1911 and they're like, yeah, it was built by this gunsmith and it has this heritage. It's like, a, you know, it's a SIG 1911, you know, like there's not, it's not a knock on it. It's just, hey, that's a production gun. It's just, it's kind of regular shit. Um, yeah, calling them regular shit is probably a good way for me to keep getting sponsored by SIG. Um, I'm not actually sponsored by them in case anyone's wondering that. It's a bad joke. Move on. Um, but there's people who get into like 1911s, right? For example, who, hey, look, not only are they interested in like the pursuit of like classic pieces of art they they know the gunsmith's 
who built those guns, right? And there's a point of pride in that in the same sense that, hey, if you get a classic, uh, you know, 69 Charger built and you're like, this guy did it, you know, like that carries weight inside of the industry. Well, you know, Alchemy Cabot companies like this, uh, Wilson Combat, Nighthawk, you know, these high-end shops, oh, they're no different. Like you take actually a, a, a deal of pride in who's making the guns. So Alchemy Custom Weaponry, hey, look, it's the same people behind Cabot guns, right? And so if you're like, hey, that, you know, there's, are they related to Cabot? Yes, they are. They're basically uh, brother or sister company or mama, papa, however you want to talk about it. Specifically, I can tell you that Rob Shallon built this 1911. The most notable thing about Rob, 100% never knew that he played Dr. Evil in Austin Powers. It's kind of cool. I like knowing that Dr. Evil is building my 1911s, right? But to quote from the uh, Alchemy site here, because they did actually give a little bio on uh, Rob. I wanted to make sure I got it right, so I wrote it down. It says, strengthened by a steady diet of bald eagle protein shakes and steroid fortified bacon, Shallon doesn't deviate from his high standards and then they go into their normal bullshit about for 30 years, building perfection, all that kind of shit. I'm only pointing this out because one, steroids are legal and two, bald eagle protein shakes. I'd actually, I'd actually try that. So anyway, if anyone has a lead, like, I don't know if there's like shit that comes in from over the board. Well, I guess bald eagle is more of an American thing. But anyway, if anyone's got a lead on black market uh, bald eagle protein shakes, I'm your guy. So why don't we talk a little bit about this thing? A little bit about the classic carry. It's Commander, a Commander, again, 1911 code. This would be the equivalent of uh, more like a Glock 19. Um, this is four and a quarter inch barrel. A government is a five inch barrel and a officer, for those of you who are like, I've seen officer, what does that mean? That would uh, be a commander length slide with a slightly shorter grip. That would be like a gun, uh, the brimstone from Alchemy, which would be, hey, it's the same thing and I'm almost positive that's correct. I think it's the same length slide. Yeah. It might be shorter. I'm going from memory, but typically an officer is just going to have a shorter uh, grip. So what you're going to have is versus on a traditional either commander or government, which if it's in 45, it's going to be eight plus one round. So you're going to have an eight round mag on an officer. You would have seven plus one. So this is a commander, which, hey, in my opinion, if you were starting out in 1911s or 2011s for that matter, uh, commander is the best all around like start there because you can use it as a bedside gun and it's plenty beefy you could use it as a uh, range gun and it's just kind of perfect uh, you could use it as a carry gun you could do whatever so it's very 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 versatile that fly agrees uh, the class carry msrp is 2800 bucks and we will circle back to that i know we just had some <gasps> like some you know people who got nervous and scared off don't worry we're going to circle back around to it because you know what 2,800 bucks is a steal, okay? We're gonna come back to that. Also comes in nine mil, which man, I gotta tell you, like if I was picking how I want that gun set up, I'm gonna take it in nine mil. Yes, you should have 1911s in classic 45 because it's just so, so, so classic. But in terms of sheer enjoyment of shooting it, I'm telling you something like this in nine mil, you're gonna want to shoot it a lot more. And the ammo is gonna be cheaper. You're gonna get more capacity. It's gonna be a lot softer to shoot. Um, so it's just, you know, in my opinion, it's going to be uh, superior in terms of the actual shootability of the gun. But yes, 45 is outstanding. Also comes in 38 Super for any of the weirdos who like weird shit. Sure, 38 Super. Um, some of the features, because again, meant to be very classic. Uh, you will notice the ring hammer. So that ring hammer versus uh, what would be a more... Uh, normal hammer that you would see on modern, or not even modern, but just like, you know, a more mainstream hammer that you would see. We'll circle back to this, which is actually a, a Cabot also actually, but you can see the difference in those hammers. Um, the ring hammer is very, very classic, classic carry, right? 
Um, it's very, very classic. Um, it's one of those immediate things that when you pick up the gun and you see this for the first time, assuming again, you're into guns like this, it's one of those things you see it and you're like, nice touch. It's very, very cool. And just as a side note, it is cut with wire EDM. So pretty cool to know that electronic dance music is that uh, strong to, to cut through steel. Um, something that's really cool that I like what Alchemy is doing is they have this uh, comfort carry checkering. Make sure I got that right. Yeah, uh, comfort carry checkering, right? So that is both on the rear and the front of your grips. So it's gonna be on your main spring housing and your front strap. Basically what it is, we will try to get a photo or a video that comes up about now. Essentially the checkering, there's two different textures. So there's lines that are, that are gonna be on basically these corners and these corners, the lines are gonna be going vertical like this, right? No cross lines, just vertical. And then on the center, which is more gonna be where you're like kind of the meat of your grip is landing, that you're picking up that traction, that's gonna have more of your traditional, you know, kind of little squared off texture, which is gonna give you a stronger grip. The purpose of that is that when you carry this, if you are carrying this appendix, let's say those sides on the rear and the front, more, more so on, on the mainspring housing, that's what's actually gonna be rubbing against your stomach or your skin or if you were carrying a uh, strong side, for example, for me as a lefty, right? That's what's gonna be rubbing against you. So it's gonna be a lot more pleasant on the skin versus a really aggressive uh, texture on that grip. So pretty cool. Like that's a really clever little thing. Uh, other people may do that, but I've never seen it. And I'm a little bit of a, of a whore for nice 1911s. Um, so I do like that touch a lot. They've got a uh, high undercut on that trigger. So this is gonna feel very, very, very nice. Um, for those of you who stipple your Glocks, it's very tough to compare this to a Glock, but it'd be kind of like if you had a high undercut on that Glock. It's just a nice way to be able to get a nice high purchase on that gun. Obviously you have the benefit of these, of a grip safety that's just gonna really tell your hand, hey, that's where you should be, okay? Uh, so it does have that high undercut. What else we got? We've got a, uh, a short trigger on this particular gun. There's really not a whole lot to talk about, but you're just gonna notice a very short trigger profile on this. And if we um, just give you a sense of the trigger, right? So there's gonna be very, very little take up on that trigger. I mean, most high-end 1911 triggers to me are very the same or very similar. The biggest distinguishing factor is gonna be, hey, is it um, a flat or a curved trigger? Obviously, if you're going for a classic design, look, curved. If this, if this gun had a flat trigger, I send it back. I send it back, send it to me when it has a traditional trigger in it, okay? So this gun does have the right trigger for this gun. Uh, it's a very short trigger, a uh, little bit of take up, which is very common. And then, you know, you just hit a dis distinct wall and then it's very, you know, again, it's a carry gun, so it's not meant to be abnormally light, uh, but it is a nice, uh, it, it's just, it's just nice. I, I mean, boom, and then your reset is, uh, you know, they're not gonna be as audible as something like a Glock or a lot of your polymer guns. But look, the reality is the trigger's money. 1911 triggers are really the gold standard by which all other pistol triggers are measured. Um, the only polymer trigger that's really like notably awesome is some of the MMP triggers. They do get pretty damn phenomenal. Uh, that'd be the closest thing you're gonna get to something like this, but really there's no way to beat a uh, awesome 1911 trigger. They've got their uh, ACW rear sight on there, which has a really nice ledge. It's a U-notch. Uh, we will try to show that off. And uh, you got a U-notch, a uh, you've got a really nice ledge. So, you know, if you're using that rear sight to, uh, you know, rack off of whatever, um, I know some people are offended that I would take nice guns and do that. Look, this gun already took some dings today, so it is what it is. But like, look, you've got a, you've got a rear sight that is robust that can get racked off of all that stuff, which, hey, are you likely to wind up in that scenario in a gunfight and you're racking shit off of car tires and everything? Uh, probably not, but I do like the option to be able to rack off of that rear sight. Uh, front sight, you know, you can take your pick, nothing real notable there. You can take your pick if you want to a gold bead or, uh, you know, tritium or just white dot or, or whatever you want, probably even blacked out, I believe. 
Uh, hand fit, match grade barrel and bushing. That's pretty straightforward. Not a ton to say about that other than obviously these are gonna be super, super accurate guns. Um, like legit accurate guns. There's a really tight lockup on this gun. It has loosened up quite a bit since I've gotten it. But when I first got it, if you would, uh, if you would just go like you were doing a press check, there would be a noticeable like, and there it goes. Like, like not like hard pressure, but just like, oh, there's a tight lockup where you have to give it a little bit more juice to get that slide moving compared to normal. After a few hundred rounds, it's broken in and, and it's buttery now. And I mean, really, like, again, one of those things you can't feel what I'm feeling, but in terms of, look, if you want to know what buttery smooth gun actions are supposed to feel like, you just, you got to try something like this sometime if you've never done it. So we've got that. Uh, what else we got? Uh, hand polished, blued finish. Uh, the finish I like, very classic, very, uh, well, you know, it's classic carry, right? It's meant to be classic. Again, this is not the kind of thing where you want some flashy, cool, cool guy shit. No, 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 you want it to be classic. Um, so yeah, that's a little bit about that gun. Mine particular one also has a uh, an ambi safety on it, by the way, which is just a feature that you can do. I mean, this gun out the door as it's configured is probably a little less than three grand. It's probably about 2,900 which again, it's a steal, and we're gonna come back to that. So if you've uh, followed our channel for a little bit, you, you will know I've done, uh, this is now my third Alchemy review. I've done two on Cabots, okay? And just so you guys know, that's not because there's some sort of uh, sponsorship or anything like that. that that's legitimately because uh, th th frankly, I was talking to, to the, uh, the owner of Cabot the other day, and I was just telling, because I was telling him we were coming out and we were filming this, blah, 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 and and uh, I was just telling him, I'm like, man, I don't know if I said this, but telepathy-wise, telepathy I did. I'm just like, man, I feel like we get each other. Like, I'm a real sucker for details and experience and make the consumer feel special and all this kind of stuff, and and they really get that. They are obsessive about attention to detail. I will point out a couple things to show you that point, okay? So one thing that was pointed out to me on these, it's gonna be tough for you to see, but we'll, we'll try to get a little footage up. There's a ball cut right here in the slide, okay? So this little ball cut that happens right here, it comes down to a point. And what I thought was really interesting is, so basically they cut the frame, right? So they take steel, make a gun frame out of it. And then they go and they match the slide to the frame. The reason they're doing that is because inevitably there's gonna be little variations from frame to frame. And they obsessively want the tip of this ball cut to line up exactly with the dust cover, which would be this right here, right? It's not a rail, dust cover. Um, they literally are individually making guns because, I mean, I'm sure for many reasons, but because that ball cut has to line up exactly with that dust cover. You're just like, man, that's like very, I mean, it's like trendy to use OCD. Like, oh, I'm so OCD. I have to sweep my house every day. Maybe you're just clean, right? But like, that's like pretty OCD kind of shit right there. Another point, and I'm almost... I feel like I need to point out this thing with an apology, okay? So this gun came with different grips. Frankly, I hated the grips that it came with. It's a carry gun, and it came with these, like, smooth grips. Those aren't the only grips that are an option. It's just that happened to be the, the one that they sent me to review. And I was like, guys, I don't like these grips. It's a carry gun, and I don't really have much grip. Like, can you send me some other shit? And they are like, sure. So they sent me these. And, uh, and I put it on, and I was like, ah, oh, it looks a lot better now. And they are they're like, well one thing though, like the, the, I'm an idiot. Okay. Like I'm, I'm just a bonehead. And when I had the screwdriver, one of the couple of the grip screws were really tight. I dinged a couple of them. Rob, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Okay. I took a Sharpie to it, but the truth is the Sharpie kind of looks worse than the scratch itself. Okay. Cause the Sharpie's like a different shade of black than the grip screws. So I'm really sorry. Not because the grip screws are expensive but because I know that ding, it, bothers you. And I, and I get it. What was more fascinating to me is that I sent them a photo. I was like, Hey, I got them on. And, uh, they're like, one, you're an idiot. You scratched up the screws. They didn't say that, but I could t telepathy wise, I could tell they were thinking it. 
and uh, but they're like, hey, uh, the the grip screws need to line up, right? Because it's like a flathead. They're like that needs to line up, and I was like, wow, okay. And to be perfectly honest, I went and looked at other 1911s that I had, and I was like, you know, it's interesting. There's some other nice 1911s I've got that use the same shape grip screw, and they're not lined up. Okay, so if you're high-end company watching this and you give a shit about that kind of stuff, you might want to think about it. So anyway, I lined them up and I sent them a photo and they're like, that's nice, but they're like, they need to line up vertically in alignment with these rear slide serrations. I'm going to repeat that, okay? The, this screw and this screw, the angle of the flathead screwdriver portion needs to be in alignment with these rear serrations. Holy shit. Like that is, that's attention to detail. Like that is real, real attention to detail. And I like it, like, I like it. They sent me that and I was like, I respect it. I'm very doubtful of the odds of me actually pulling that off. Cause again, bonehead, I don't know what I'm doing. You know, I already scratched them up. So like unlikely that I will get that perfect, but I will do my best. Eh, Papa didn't do too bad right there. Like that they're okay. There's a little discrepancies, but you know, not too bad. This one's got some Sharpie on it. Again, apologies, but um, obsessive attention to detail. All right, uh, who's this bad boy for? It's really for the purists, okay? There, there's never gonna be the mass market for something like this uh, as compared to like, you know, a, a polymer pistol. Not just because of a price difference of 600 versus, you know, 2,800, but just because that's a gun for people who appreciate classic things, okay? This particular one, the classic carry, the Brimstone would be their other one that's more designed as a uh, carry option, which we would have, I mean, is legitimately like one of our first reviews back in like September 2019, October, somewhere in there. So you can find it. It's not the best guys. We were figuring out what we were doing, still figuring out what we're doing, but like that review is definitely like, you're going to be like the colors are washed out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I understand. Um, Okay, but that one is gonna be, because it has that officer uh, grip, so it's gonna have one less round. So now really you're looking at seven plus one rounds of 45. Um, that gun's gonna be more designed for someone who needed to be like very low profile with what they were carrying. That is gonna be a better all purpose gun in my, in my opinion. If you were buying one Alchemy, I would say that's your winner right there. They have one that I believe is called the Anomaly, if I remember correct, that, is gonna be sort of the most unique one. It's gonna have uh, basically like this flat hammer. So really you you don't have the ability if your hammer was down to pull that hammer back, you've got to rack your slide. Um, it's aesthetically very, very cool. It has less of a, of a beaver tail. So it's not gonna be as functional. Aesthetically, it's, it's stunning, but um, that I believe is their best all purpose gun. I think it begs a comparison of, well, how does something like this stack up against a Cabot? So it just so happens, uh, we've never done a review on this gun. This is a uh, Cabot Guns Vintage Classic. This is how I met Cabot originally. Uh, I was at SHOT Show and um, I stumbled across their booth and uh, this frankly was an impulse order at SHOT Show, straight up. It was one of those things I saw it and I was like, man, that thing is so awesome. And I mean, it is so buttery smooth and yada, yada, yada. I mean, I can tell you so many different things I liked about it that I, you know, I went back the next day and I was like, just write up the damn paperwork, man. Um, and and I, and I love this gun. I don't shoot it a ton just because I don't shoot it 45 as much as nine. But these two, for me, beg to be compared because really you've got a commander chambered in 45 from Cabot. You've got a commander in 45 from Alchemy. Both are non-railed. Um, I mean, they are very, very, very similar. Uh, this Cabot, now granted this is maybe uh, three years old now, so who knows, maybe they're doing the comfort carry check ring, but I think that's unique to Alchemy. I mean, there's some slight differences, but in reality, they're very, very, very similar. And the truth be told, earlier when I was talking about, okay, well, 2800 is a steal, it is, it, like, it, it, it is. I'm sorry, guys, if you start talking about high-end 1911s, the 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 entry point to start playing that game is about three bills okay so you're looking at about three grand to start acquiring nice 1911s okay don't hate me i'm just the messenger this which to me is worth every penny of it for me would have been about 4200 because again ambi safety uh for me as a lefty that's the only modification actually i did throw in the gold bead front sight because i wanted to see what all the hoopla 
as they say is about with that. Um, so, I mean, there's some minor, minor differences. This, again, being more traditional, the Alchemy is going to have a round top. The Cabot has a flat top that does have a nice top treatment on it that is, is very nice that I am quite fond of. Um, I hate that Novak rear sight. They know that. I think everyone that has associated with me in 1911s know that I, I hate those sights. Um, but it is what it is. I don't even think they're even using that anymore, to be honest with you. But again, that gun's three years old. Um, so, you know, there's some small differences that you can start to nitpick. Yeah, the slide serrations are, are different back here. To be perfectly honest, I enjoy the Alchemy ones more. But overall, these are very similar guns. And I got to tell you, when you start talking about like 42, 4300 for something like this, which despite it being worth it to me, I got to be honest. If I'm picking one gun between these two, I'm kind of more drawn to that alchemy because it, again, it's so classic and it's so simple, right? And I think that's who it appeals to is just those people who go, you know what? I would like, like take me to, I don't know, like a nice steak dinner over a strip club. I mean, both are, you know, probably not the best comparison because you could go to a nice steak dinner and then go to a strip club or go to a strip club that serves nice steak. Like, I don't know, but however we got to that point, I'm drawn to it. I, I like it. It speaks to me. And, and like, I mean, if you ever want to know what ergonomics on a pistol should feel like, it's, it's this. Like, it's, it's 1911s. The, the, it, these perfect ergonomics that are just like, well, that's what a pistol should feel like. So, again, I'm giving you a sales pitch, not for these guys, for 1911s, because I just feel like it's such a polarizing gun. And if you love it, you get it. And if you hate it, you hate it, but you might not even know why. You just default back to this eight rounds. We've got eight rounds, and I want 15. Okay, like, fuck, dude. You know, sometimes there's things more important than capacity. If, for example, if the FBI, I'm going to get chewed up in the comments for this. If the FBI statistics are something like the average engagement is like three rounds for self-defense, you're like, okay, 15 rounds is cool, but like, isn't eight enough per statistics? I'm gonna get lit up in the comments for that because I'm sure I'm off on a stat in there somewhere, but you get the point. You're like, there's, there's things more important than capacity sometimes. Yeah, it's got eight rounds. Sometimes that's, well, that's what I want. It's just, it speaks to me. It's like a love language. We're, we're talking, you know? It's like we're, we're, we're pin pals. I love it. It's 2,800 bucks, but it's undervalued. It is, I've told people this so many times. I'll say it again. If you're looking for the undervalued gun inside of this high-end 1911 space i'm telling you that's the that's the company right now like all the other big boys like they've already made their names they're charging their big boy prices these guys are making as nice shit, but at a third less of the price I'm telling you it's a steal i think i'm done i think i'm done again rob i'm sorry about your grip screws i know they're not lined up correct rob shallon there's two different robs there rob shallon Keep doing Dr. Evil shit. And uh, yeah, rock and roll. Later, America.